Let's face it, human pair bonding is more complicated than it's ever been before in society. That's partly because today we see more casual relationships, situationships, friends with benefits, and hooking up as being the predominant narrative for people that are entering into the dating marketplace. It used to be a serious relationship, a life partner-based relationship was the way people entered into the dating process, having that sense of awareness. Now, because most likely if you're, if you're in the over 40 category, and I roughly say about 75% of singles who are over 45 years old are divorced, with divorce comes a radical shift in a person's perception in many cases because they might be gun shy going forward. And this is one of the reasons why we see the rise in casual relationships. And today I'm going to talk about three strong signs he's ready to commit to you. Now, signs he's not ready to commit to you after meeting you, he becomes flaky. While that might seem obvious, okay, particularly after somebody, after two people have physical intimacy with one another, all of a sudden they seem to be unavailable. That's a common um, thread or thread we see today. Excuse me, tread, not thread. We see this common thread, and I'm going to give you some clues on how to avoid some of that before you ever get too physically involved with someone. Now, one sign he's not capable of a relationship, and this is true for women as well, is if their life is in some sort of chaos. Please forgive me for the slurping. My coffee's hot. Their life is in chaos. Maybe they're going through a contentious divorce. Maybe he's separated from some his spouse. Maybe he's got issues going on in his professional life. Maybe he's got issues with his children. Maybe he's got health issues. All of these things represents a person who love life. The, the ground underneath the person doesn't feel solid. And yet women are susceptible to, susceptible to this because ladies, you have this beautiful capacity to project the future, to project potential. And in this protect projecting of the future and the potential, the potential, because he checks off a few of boxes, you start to do something known as magical thinking. And this is why you can get attached to somebody who isn't right for you. You must look at a person's life and you have to look at your own life. Does the ground underneath you feel relatively solid? That's not to say that we aren't all going to have circumstances and situations in our lives that are going to create blips of uncertainty. But does the ground underneath them feel solid? Is this person's life in chaos? Because if his life is in chaos, he is not going to be able to truly, truly commit to you. And that's what this conversation is about. Now, another important factor to consider is signs he has issues. Does he have unresolved trauma from his childhood? Does he have unresolved trauma in his adult, adult life? We just mentioned one of the most significant adult traumas is divorce. And folks, divorce is the unraveling of the tapestry of our life with another human being. And recognizing that that can be an emotionally traumatic event for somebody that requires oftentimes some deep healing, looking inward, looking introspectively, taking ownership. On, and by the way, this is true for you as well, taking ownership on your part to the ending of the relationship. See, sadly here, particularly in the United States, it's, it's his fault. It's her fault. It's his fault. It's her fault. It's her fault. It's his fault. Very few people, they point the finger without looking at the three fingers pointing back at them, particularly in divorce or the ending of a significant relationship. And let's not forget, I said earlier, childhood wounds. See, sadly, many people have unresolved traumas in their childhood, and some of them can be micro traumas. They could be, you could have grown up in a very loving household and still had some traumatic events that affect how you operate, how your personality is as an adult that could set you up for weak emotional maturity and poor relationship skills. You see, dating is a vetting process. Vetting meaning, look at, 
It used to be something called courtship. Courtship was an intentional act to explore a significant relationship. Dating today is like test driving a car. Now, some people go to a new car dealership. Some people go to a used car dealership and they say, I'd like to test drive the car. Okay. And they get to drive it around, use it. And by the way, in this particular case, it isn't a 15 minute test drive. For some of you, it could be months, if not years, somebody is test driving you without any intention of buying, or sometimes they do what I call a lease with an option to buy, meaning they might agree to monogamy and exclusivity, but no real sense of commitment. And this is what dating is about, to determine, are you on the same page with each other? Do you share the same values? Are your lifestyles blendable? Do you have a shared life vision? And most importantly, that emotional maturity. And you see, the problem with our current dating environment, it's so hyper-focused on romance that we can get attached to or attracted to someone from a romantic perspective, which can trump our good judgment or worse. You have a nagging feeling inside of you that something's not right, but you look around it, you take red flags and paint them green and really quickly. A red flag is not just a character deficiency within another person. A red flag could simply be a difference in lifestyles that, that we oftentimes might, or a difference within that person's personality that we oftentimes, not, doesn't have to always be character, can be a personality or lifestyle difference. And then we go, well, you know what? If we love each other enough, we will magically make this work out. See, the magical thinking is that if you love each other, you can solve all your problems. No, the only way to solve, care. well, first off, you can't solve character deficiencies. That's not something you can solve. Certainly, you might have preference differences in life, okay, or personality differences. Sometimes we have to accept quirky personality or personalities that might be a little bit off-putting. I'll use the example of Sally when Harry met Sally, or even Harry himself. Sally was a bit neurotic. This was her personality. And he was able to look at that difference, overcome the difference, and actually learn to accept and appreciate that difference. And he was a little bit misogynistic in his personality, but he certainly changed. This wasn't a character flaw. It was a personality difference. And then there's certainly differences in lifestyle. And that's what the dating process is, is to vet do you notice character differences? Do you notice personality differences and also lifestyle differences? That's what the dating process is. You see, midlife dating requires being more intentional because here's the thing. Most everybody in midlife might have had multiple relationships. And within these multiple relationships, there's residue from the past and that residue could affect how someone operates in a future relationship. And so when you're considering someone from a life partnership perspective, from a committed perspective, I want you to at least pay attention to these strong signs he's ready for commitment because at least it puts the odds in your favor. Now, the first one kind of relates to the strong sign he's not into you. Remember I said it was flakiness, which is rather obvious, but a strong sign he's into you is that he makes you a priority. In other words, he's actively thinking about spending time with you. By the way, in fact, a really strong sign he's into you is when his inner six-year-old comes out. I heard this from Matt Kahn. He calls it the inner six-year-old. And he's excited to want to be with you. That little kid that says, I really, like he texts you moments after your first date. And he says, I really like you. And I want to make sure you got home on time. That's his inner six-year-old. And if we can't accept each other's inner six-year-old, that little impatient part of us that wants to spend regular time and we make someone a priority, then you have to ask yourself, if you don't accept somebody's desire to make you a priority, you have to ask yourself, are you even ready for a significant relationship? And the reason why I bring this up right now in this conversation, I've noticed many of you ladies are equally scared of love 
because of that residue we talked about a moment ago, those past relationships that didn't work out. And many of you have walls up. And so when you actually have a good guy who makes you a priority, sometimes you sabotage a good relationship because of your own fears or pains from the past. And let me just say this. Your relationship readiness is a, is a it's, there's a couple different factors for a relationship readiness. Your desire and your capacity for a relationship exceeds your fear, your pain, and your circumstances. Your fear, your pain, and your circumstances. In other words, that desire and capacity exceeds that for you. And by the way, it's also for him as well. This is critically important because a lot of people might desire their relation, desire relationship, but their capacity is down here. Or they might desire a relationship and they might even have a capacity, but their fear is overwhelming. Their past pains are overwhelming or their life circumstances might be so overwhelming. And quite frankly, then you don't have a capacity for a relationship. And these are things that you have to take into consider. Well, first off, you don't have to do anything, okay? You don't have to do anything. You don't have to take my advice, but my here, but I'm here to encourage being mindful. Folks, it's time to let go of the fantasy way that we've been indoctrinated into relationships, or at least if you want a life partner-based relationship. Excuse my slurping again. If you want a casual relationship, you're welcome to do so. If you want a situationship, you're welcome to do so. If you want a friends with benefits or hooking up, you're welcome to do so. Here's the challenge with those types of relationships. There is a collat an emotional consequence for getting attached to somebody who isn't on the same page as you. So this is why I'm bringing up these three songs, three strong signs, but more importantly, to encourage you to be mindful beyond the surface, beyond attachment, beyond attraction, to be in a space of, of intentionality and being an emotional grown up along the way. The second strong sign, he actively tries to help you in your life. Hey, you might be going through a move and he says, hey, can I come help you move? You might have some issues going on at work and he's actively trying to help you. Maybe you've got some, you're ready to refinance your home. And he says, hey, let me help you with this because I, I did mine last year. He's actively trying to help you with your life. He's actively trying to help you in the sense that um, you have children and you need some advice regarding the children. He's actively helping you in his life. See, a man who actively tries to help you in your life, it's because he sees you in his life. People that try to avoid that. I know a man who just started a, dating a woman and he, she said, hey, I'm moving. He's like, I can't help you with that. Because he didn't want, he, see, the minute somebody starts to try to actively help you in your life, they're saying, I'm, I'm working towards all in. With someone who avoids that, they want to keep that distance. They want to keep an emotional barrier. They want to keep a physical barrier because they might be getting their needs of companionship, connection, and sex met out of the relationship. But it doesn't require going any deeper than that. They keep distance, particularly into trying. And by the way, this goes both ways too, ladies. If you're not actively trying to help him in his life, then you may not be commitment ready. But these are some of the signs to pay attention to. Is he actively trying to help you in his life? Third sign, which I'll share in a second. Look, I recognize that this is really complicated stuff. In some cases, it's like rolling the dice. The most important thing you can do for yourself is do the personal development, self-help, and spiritual work. The work I talk about in my book called What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? To know your patterns, to know your triggers, to know your attachment style, to know your, your weaknesses, to know the to be self-reflective, to be self-aware is to know that every experience you've had to this point in your life, you've been an active participant. And to take full ownership, take ownership in the past relationship challenges. 
And by the way, vetting another human being isn't easy. This is why, look, I created a coaching program to help you figure this out. We do something in my, by the way, there's a link below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. One of the things I do is something called radical honesty pre-qualifying your prospect. This is creating, creating a series of questions based on your personality to determine do we share the same values with one another outside the surface level? Are our lifestyles truly compatible with one another? Do we share the same life vision? But more importantly, is this person an emotional grown up? And one of the additional exercises is called gauge his emotional maturity. Gauge his emotional maturity. See, these three songs, strong, three strong signs is usually a reflection of a person who's an emotional grown up. That what I call a grower builder. If you're not familiar with my chart, the three types of act, people actively dating. Oh, huh, here, let me use this one instead without the glare. There are, by the way, this is not a fact, a merely opinion. 20% of the population are users. 60% are what I call spenders, and the last group are called grower and builders. See, the grower and builder is going to show up. You can, by the way, go back and rewind this and freeze frame it here. One of the things the grower and builder does, the third strong sign, is he integrates you into his life, and he wants to be part of your life. There's an integration of your lives. See, a man who doesn't integrate you into his life, nor does he want to integrate in your life, is probably what I call either a user or a spender. And a spender, he wants companionship, he wants connection, he wants sex, but he has no desire for commitment. You are a placeholder in his life. You, he will spend time with you, hence why he's called a spender. He will spend time with you, but without any real desire for commitment. By the way, my coffee mug says, swear a little, you'll feel better. On my Sunday videos called Jonathan from the Heart, I don't swear. <laughs> I'll swear most any other time on a video. Folks, when he makes you a priority, when he's actively trying to help you in your life, he integrates you into his life and he, does the, and he wants to integrate into your life. Those are three strong signs that he's ready to commit to you. And it's important to do your due diligence in the early stages so you don't find yourself investing in the wrong person because our hearts are a very precious commodity. And before we give our heart to someone, I believe they have to earn it outside of love bombing or lust and limerence, which many people fall into the trap of. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this video. Post a comment below. I do my best to read them all in the first 24 hours. As always, if you find value in my videos, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And also go to your phone and hit the notification bell as well. And if you want to connect with me directly, there's links below to schedule a discovery call. There's a link to join my group called Mid life, love, mastery. There's a links to follow me on Instagram. There's links to get my dating vows all designed to help you with your love life. And I make you a promise. If you do the work, it will change your life. All right. I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love. If that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a titty bear, a pillow and give it or them. I just said, give it or them a hug of love because Hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.